How's the real estate market in early December of 2023? That is a question that I get constantly from my clients. And in this video, I'm going to tell you what has been happening in the real estate market over the past month and where it looks that prices and homes are going in the coming months. You have to stay on top of this. If you have any intention of making a move, whether selling or buying in the next two months or 12 months, so you have an understanding of what's happening out there and what timing might be the right time for you to be able to make that move to capitalize and either pay the cheapest if you're a buyer or be able to make the most if you are a seller. And in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover over the stats of November, what happened throughout that month and where it looks like things are going in the coming months. My name is Jonathan Lerner with the Vancouver Life Real Estate Group and our team here. We get calls, we get texts, we get emails every single day from people just like you that are wondering what is happening in the market right now and what makes the most sense for them based off of where they're at and the moves that they want to be able to make. And so we're going to dive into that right now. First off, can you believe it is December already? With just weeks left remaining in 2023, we've seen a steady increase in inventory over the last few months, which is the first time that we've seen this number of listings since 2021, which is an amazing sign and something that is in a great position for buyers if you were looking at making a purchase in real estate. At the same time, it's also not a good time to buy if you can't afford it because affordability is still not good, right? Our interest rates are still super high. The Bank of Canada has recently held rates and so rates are not going up right now. They are not taking out that potential of another rate hike, but in terms of all the indicators out there right now, it doesn't look like we're gonna have another one. But at the same time, home prices haven't come down significantly. And so, and at the interest rates where they are, housing affordability is not at a good position. And here in the greater Vancouver metropolitan area, housing is already super high. However, the caveat with that is if you do have the ability to buy, this is the time to buy because if you look at the historical data of where things go in the greater Vancouver market and what happens when there is dips and the recovery that happens, typically we don't go below a 13% dip in prices rarely ever in the Vancouver market over the last three, four decades and before prices have started to come up. And right now we're only about four, four to five percent below the peak prices that we saw during COVID, right in the midst of COVID. And so right now, and we're, we're seeing a recovery. Yes, things are softening right now due to interest rates and things like that, but it doesn't look like we're gonna have any Black Friday deals. And so this is what I wanna share with you in terms of what's happened over the past month and where it looks like things are going. So. Let's dive in right in here. Inventory, we ended at the end of November with just over 10,900 listings, which is 13.5% higher than November of last year, 2022, and it's 3.7% higher than the 10 year average. And so we are in a better spot now than we've ever been since 2021 over the last two years. So in terms of inventory and homes to choose from on the market, this is the best spot that we've been in over the last two years. Combine this with low sales. Our sales in the month of November were actually 33% below the 10 year average. And then combine that with our sales to active listings ratio, which came in at 16.3%, which puts us in a balanced market. And this is a balanced market in all product types. And so what I mean by that is we were in a balanced market over the last couple of months but only in detached homes. And that brought down the overall ratio. Seller, uh, condos and townhouses were still in a seller's market. So you didn't have as much negotiation power as a buyer. Now, officially as of November, all three product types, detached single family homes, condos and townhouses are all within balanced market territory. And so as a seller, that you're not in as good of a position to be able to get the best possible price. However, on the flip side, as a buyer, you have a lot more power in the process and you have more negotiation room to be able to get a better deal for yourself. These are things to be able to note and depending on which side you are on, there's still pros and cons of the situation on both sides. And so if you are selling and you have a good property that doesn't need a lot of work and it shows well, those properties are still selling fast. If you have a property that needs some work and it's not priced very competitively, well, those properties are still sitting on the market for quite a while. And that's the unfortunate part about a lot of the inventory that we have 
is a lot of the inventory has been stagnant for a while. And a lot of that inventory is the inventory that needs some work or has not been priced very well. So it's not attracting buyers to it because the price point's just a little bit too high to be able to make it worth it for the buyer. If you are priced right, if you have an attractive home that doesn't need a lot of work, those properties are absolutely selling fast and you can still get a strong dollar for that property. This balanced market scenario and situation right now will basically create a softer price, which we have seen prices come down slightly, not very much, and prices are typically going to be at more of a plateau now. And there, we're still in a housing shortage overall, and we still have immigration coming into the city. So there's still growing demand for housing, despite where the home situation and inventory growing is. Now, because we have higher interest rates still, it still makes an, uh, an aspect of unaffordability for a lot of people because people are still getting qualified at seven, eight, eight and a half percent. And so that's really reducing their purchasing power. So a lot of people are still holding back until things look more positive, which I'll get into a little bit later into this video. One thing to note though, with this balanced market is that this is the entirety of the greater Vancouver market. So every single city and every neighborhood is going to operate a little bit differently within that because there's still going to be areas in Vancouver or in Burnaby or elsewhere where a certain segment of the market, whether it's condos or townhouses, for example, that are still going to be in a seller's market versus a balanced market. We're just talking about the market as a whole. And so every single neighborhood and, and city is going to be a little bit different. So it depends on where it is that you're looking at buying or where you're looking at selling of how those numbers are going to differentiate your home and the timing for when you want to be able to make that move. In terms of pricing compared to November last year, we are 4.9% above what the prices in November last year were. So we still have a 5% growth in pricing compared to a year ago. And so on the selling side, you are still in a strong position, especially like I said, is that we are just 5% below what the peak prices were throughout COVID. So we're not far away from the top prices now. You do have to be willing to negotiate and maybe play a little bit more back and forth and, and have the terms that may not be 100% favorable to you. But again, this all depends on the neighborhood, the city, and your product and what you have available to be able to sell and the demand for that based off of the, the buyers that are coming to and looking at your property. Now, as we head into this holiday season, I really want the buyers to pay attention because typically, homes that are still actively listed throughout December and throughout the holidays, because a lot of sellers take their homes off market because they want to be able to enjoy the holidays. They don't want to worry about people coming through, but homes that are typically active and available for sale during the holidays, during the Christmas season, those people want to sell. And so if you're a buyer and if you're looking for a potential opportunity to be able to buy, a lot of buyers take this time off as well. And so if you want to find something, this could be the time where you can get a great deal on a property because the homes that are for sale actively right now during this period of time, typically they have a reason why they are for sale and they want to be able to keep that home up and they want to be able to get it sold. So this is a great opportunity for you as a buyer to be actively looking over the course of this next month. As I mentioned earlier this week, the Bank of Canada paused interest rates and held them where they were at 5% for the overnight rate. This is the third consecutive time in their announcement that they have held that rate. And prior to that, 10 out of the last 12 announcements that they did, they increased the rate. So this is in a good, strong position. There's more economic data stating that the GDP growth is low, job growth is low. And so that is leading to the signs that we are in a recession or if it's not official, we're basically near one that's not a by the numbers official. And so just be aware of that, that we are in this position where inflation has also come down from uh, September to October, we went from 3.8% inflation to 3.1. So that is strong movement. And if inflation continues on this downward trend or at least staying close to where it is, there's a very strong likelihood that over the next coming announcements, which is what I expect, that the Bank of Canada is going to maintain their hold on the overnight rate of 5% and have no increases or decreases. Economists and analysts are forecasting that there will be a rate cut as long as things kind of stay uh, where they are on the same trend by the summer, potentially even sooner. Now, of course, the Bank of Canada is uh, in their statement where they're holding rates, we're taking a hawkish view of like, hey, we're still reserving that we might do a rate increase. And that all depends in terms of what happens with inflation and the numbers. However, at this point today, this month in December, or the December, it looks like things will, we are gonna see a rate cut typically by about the summer, if not a little bit earlier, if things continue on the same trend. Where it looks like probably between now and end of February, 
If things continue at this rate, we are going to probably see the best discounts that you could possibly get because things are likely going to increase in terms of consumer sentiment that people are going to be more positive about making a big purchase as we get into the spring. If inflation remains on the same path in terms of a slight downward trend and being below 3%, and if the Bank of Canada holds interest rates, well, that's going to be a lot more people are going to be more positive that there is a rate cut in the future. Now, it's probably only, good, only going to be a quarter point, so it's not going to make a big difference. But that is going to make people more willing and optimistic about getting into the real estate market. If that's the case, that means we're going to have a greater surge of buyers entering the spring market, which is typically starting around March or and after spring break when kids get back from spring break. Be aware of that, that this next couple of months, next few months is probably gonna be your best time as a buyer to really be able to get a deal out there. Now, sellers, I've been talking to a lot of clients and they are waiting and thinking they wanna wait until the spring to be able to list their home. And again, depending on the product type, depending on the area, this is a conversation we need to have to be able to find out if that makes the most sense for you and if that's actually going to net you the most money for your property. And it's gonna change on every situation. Knowing that if you have questions about your situation, your home, your home that you wanna move into, the city, the neighborhood, all of these things are gonna be factors. So if you have questions about those, please reach out and my team and I would absolutely love to be able to help you and help you make your move as smooth as possible. So give us a call, send us a text, send us an email, schedule a Zoom call. All our details are down below this video in the description and we'd love to be able to help you make a smooth move and make it as easy as possible and get the best possible deal for you. So look forward to be able to talk to you and uh, if you have any questions on the market where it looks like things are going in the coming months as well for you, again, reach out and we'd be happy to talk.